Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll have a bit of a chat about what's going on here in Spain. We'll go into the press and take a look at what is happening there. And we'll also go into the comment section and have a look at what's going on there. Also, plenty of news around today, especially stories related to the Constitutional Court's decision the other day when they said that the lockdown or the confinement that we had here in Spain at the beginning of last year was unconstitutional. And let's just say that the government is not very happy with that ruling. Various government ministers have come out in defense of the actions that they took last year when they shut the country down in order to try to contain the spread of COVID-19. The defense minister, Margarita Robles, said that the government did what it had to do, and she even hinted at political bias in the Constitutional Court's decision, given that it was the political party Vox that brought this case to the Constitutional Court. And the whole debate lies in the fact that the government used last year a mechanism called a state of emergency when they should have used a state of exception. And apparently the legal parameters of that state of emergency didn't justify locking down the country for three and a half months. And today it is still one of the main stories that the press is going with, as we can see here in El Mundo. And according to this newspaper, Carmen Calvo, the former vice president, quiso aplicar el estado de excepción, pero Félix Bolaños lo rechazó. So apparently she wanted to apply a state of exception, but the person who replaced her, and who I think was her number two at the time, rejected it. So Spain's severe lockdown last year, one of the strictest in Europe, declared unconstitutional. And I must admit that living here during that period, it was a very, very tough time. And what does it mean? Well, not a lot, because there's not much we can do now. It is in in the past, but apparently all of the fines that were handed out may be declared null and void. Now another story that caught my attention yesterday was about poverty here in Spain and the fact that it has increased since the pandemic began. The English version of El País is leading with this story and we can see that the coronavirus pandemic pushed poverty in Spain to highest levels since the Great Recession. According to a survey from the National Statistics Institute, 7% of Spaniards were suffering severe material deprivation by the end of last year. So severe material deprivation, and exactly how do they classify that? Well, let's have a look. According to the INE, which has produced this indicator since 2004, a person is considered to be in a situation of severe material deprivation if they cannot afford at least four of these nine elements. Go on vacation at least once a year, eat meat, chicken or fish at least every other day, keep the house at a suitable temperature, face unforeseen expenses, 750 euros, have delays in paying the mortgage, rent, receipts or purchases finance for 12 months, or if they can't afford to have a car, telephone, television or washing machine. So if you can't afford at least four of those nine elements, you find yourself in a severe material deprivation situation. And as we saw in that headline from El País, the worst figures since the Great Depression. And another statistic to come out of that survey was that 10% of the population here in Spain have trouble making ends meet. So poverty on the rise here in Spain, unfortunately. Now the pandemic here in Spain continues to dominate headlines, so too the words restrictions and curfews, and we can read these words all over the press today. Catalonia, I think, is the latest or autonomous community to impose a curfew on something like 160 municipalities in that part of Spain. And Extremadura has announced today that they are going to allow mobility even in restricted areas for people that have been vaccinated. Extremadura pide el toque de queda para tres municipios y permite la libre movilidad a los vacunados. So an interesting story there coming out of Extremadura. If you have completed vaccination, you're allowed to travel in and out of restricted municipalities, but if you haven't, you're stuck. Now, I imagine this will soon be the norm in other autonomous communities here in Spain as well. As we know, various countries in the European Union are asking for COVID certificates to enter bars and restaurants, and there's also talk about that being implemented in Spain in the near future. Now we'll have a look at a summary of the health situation here in Spain. We can see that the incidence rate has now cracked the 500 mark. Hospital admissions are up 73% on previous data. There are currently 4,705 people hospitalized around the country with COVID. And there are 838 COVID patients in ICU. Spain's main COVID hotspot, Catalonia, has an incidence rate of a whopping 1,107. And hospital admissions, they're up 108% on previous data. And if we have a look at Murcia, an autonomous community wedged between Andalusia and the Valencian community, we can see that the incidence rate there is only 217, so quite low if we compare it to other parts of the country. So Spain well and truly in the middle of its fifth wave 
of the coronavirus pandemic. Now let's take a look at some of the comments from recent videos. We'll have a look at this one here from Sean. When I started teaching English in Spain and had limited Spanish, I had a class with a veterinary professor from Murcia. In his jumbled discourse, he mentioned something about murcielagos, and I innocently asked him if he was referring to people from Murcia. The biggest laugh I ever got. Yeah, Sean, thanks for the comment, and thanks for pointing out your experience down there in Murcia. I had a comment from somebody the other day who criticized me for not mentioning Murcia more. So from now on, I'm going to try and find a little bit more information about that region here in Spain. Now, I imagine that the mistake that you mentioned there, calling somebody from Murcia a murcielago, has been committed by many an English speaker over the journey because murcielago means bat and people from Murcia are known as murcianos. So luckily the professor had a good sense of humor and you both had a bit of a laugh about it. One here from Spain, Pete, Ola Stewart, mate, hope you are keeping away from the vino or at least partaking in moderation. Yes, Bain Pete, thanks for the comment. And yes, I did partake in moderation when it comes to wine on my recent trip to one of Spain's most prominent wine areas, the Ribera del Duero area, and also to the small town of Toro, which has very, very good wine. A couple of glasses a day, that's all I had. I was traveling with my son, so I didn't want to get too sloshed, but there is wine in abundance in that part of the world. And very, very good quality, I must say, and also quite cheap. As you can see, I'm back in my studio today. We came back yesterday and I'm already missing that part of Spain. It's a fantastic part of the country and well worth a visit in my opinion, especially if you like to have a glass of vino or two. One here from Chris, latest news from the UK, Balearic Islands on Amber List, a never ending circle. Many thanks for your update. Yeah, Chris, thanks for the comment. And I did read the other day that the United Kingdom has once again added the Balearic Islands to their traffic light list and has put them in the amber category. And you're right, unfortunately, this is a never ending circle. We saw it a couple of months ago with Portugal they were on the green list and they were on the amber list and now with the Balearic Islands and believe me the tourism sector here in Spain is not happy with that decision but obviously the UK government and other governments in Europe don't think that Spain is a safe destination at the moment and that is why they are recommending against traveling to Spain this summer. One here from Martin. Hi Stuart, gracias por el video. I have seen zero social distancing here, tables being moved to accommodate bigger groups of people, handshaking and kissing on cheeks. They just don't get it. Yeah Martin, thanks for the comment and that does seem to be one of the big problems here in Spain at the moment that a lot of people don't understand what they need to do. They're shaking hands, they're hugging, they're kissing and they're going back to their old ways, going out in large groups and that is leading to very high incidence rates of COVID-19 here in Spain and the virus is quickly spreading spreading around the country. But as we mentioned the other day, this is a country where people love to socialize, people love to get out and about, and summer is the time to do it. And as I also said the other day, it seems like 2021 is going to be a carbon copy of 2020. And another thing that we should keep in mind is that politicians in this country often give people a false sense of security. They did it last year when they told us that the virus had disappeared, and then two months later we had restrictions again. And about a month ago, the Prime Minister said something similar, and that obviously led a lot of people to think that the virus situation was under control, which clearly it wasn't. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.